Hello, you're very welcome along to our latest Land of the Rising Scrum here on Off the Ball as we look through the characters, the stories, the memories and every country heading to Japan for the 2019 Rugby World Cup. We're on episode 13 now, six more to go after this, so we'll need to get our skates on and get moving because there's just over one month to go until kickoff in Japan. And a reminder, if you have missed any of our episodes uh, previously, you can listen back to those at offtheball.com forward slash podcast or check us out on the Go Loud app. And you can also watch these back on YouTube as well, youtube.com forward slash off the ball. And all of our coverage here uh, of rugby coverage on off the ball is brought to you by Vodafone, team of us, everyone in. Now, this week we're looking at Tonga, who could provide one of the stories of the tournament because our guest on the show this week is making his comeback to the game after almost a year out receiving treatment for testicular cancer. Uh, Nasi Manu, good afternoon. Thanks a million for uh, taking our call today and speaking to us. I think just to start, though, whether or not you go to the World Cup next month, your story over the past year has captured the imagination of so many rugby fans around the world. Because if you could take us back uh, to last October when the news broke that you had been diagnosed with testicular cancer. Yeah, it was uh, obviously a, um, yeah, it was a, a surprising news for me. Um, going back to, to around uh, August um yeah it was a, a very emotional time and uh, i guess for me uh um a, a, a turning point in my life where it's sort of um <clears throat> put things into perspective for me and and what was important and uh yeah the support that i received from uh, my rugby team especially benetton um has been yeah just anything uh anyone could ask for going through Mm-hmm. And if you take us back to when the problem first came about and when you first noticed the the issue, it, I think it was October when uh, it was broken publicly, but as you say, there was kind of August, September when you would have yeah. been going through the early stages of this. If, if you could just take us back and maybe tell us about how it came about and you know how you, how you discovered this, uh, uh, what, was yeah. it a kind of a, a growth on your testicle, was it? Yeah, so I noticed something wasn't quite right um, with my left testicle um, about around August, and I, I went to see the doctor, and uh, you know they gave me some pills, which uh, they thought you know might have been an infection of some sort, but wasn't quite sure what what, what was happening until I yeah I, I noticed that it had been getting worse, like just got a bit harder and, and a bit bigger. And quite painful, and then I, I uh, went and got went to the specialist, and they gave me an ultrasound, and yeah, pretty much within two days of uh, going to the specialist, uh, they yeah they they told me that I had uh, testicular cancer, and that they would have to uh, immediately, uh, I would have to immediately have surgery and have it removed. So yeah, the thirty first of August uh, is when I. Got my left had uh, the surgery, and then uh, yeah, the following months they they let me uh, recover on my own and to see if my blood levels, my tumor markers, would uh, naturally go down and and disappear. But then yeah, I think it was around uh, October where they scanned me and um, they said that uh, I would have to uh, undergo uh, chemotherapy. And what's this, what's that like receiving that news? Because I imagine for for anybody receiving that news, it is you know you're you know you're looking at your own life. You're not so much yeah. just questioning your professional career, but even from a rugby player's point of view, where your entire adult life has been based around being this indestructible, big, strong man, and all of a sudden you're probably more vulnerable than you've ever been in your life. Yeah, look when I. When I first, um, when they, when the word cancer was thrown thrown into, um, like when the doctors, because they obviously it's, uh, living in Italy, um, the doctors don't speak um, so much Italian, I mean English. Mm. So then, so then when they told me, it was kind of um, shocking, but at the same time, I, yeah, it was. It took me a little bit longer to process, but yeah, it was very emotional. I. Um, like I said before, I really just, I, I was overwhelmed with emotions, but once when I was told that I first had cancer and then 
obviously overwhelmed with some more emotions when they told me that I would have to do chemo. Um, it just really, yeah, I really looked at my, my life, how I had been living before. I really had a, a set goal of, of how I wanted want to continue living. Um, and, yeah, just for me to go into chemo with a positive mindset and, yeah, I guess the support I received from a club and the gesture that they did by shaving their hair and the jerseys and obviously my family was big. My mom and dad, they came over for my treatments and my mother-in-law. And, and yeah, for me, I, I just, um, yeah, I had all the support. And, and like you said, uh, you know, being a big rugby player, um, you know, it doesn't mean you're immune to... <laughs> to things like this and, and and you can't prepare for it. There's no way to prepare for it. And yeah, that was a different challenge that I've, yeah. And even, nothing like uh, like a sporting uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. And the actual chemotherapy process, how long, how long of a, a kind of a bout did you have to go through that? Yeah, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm not really thing on the dates but mm. it was uh four cycles um uh one cycle five days of chemotherapy every 21 days uh four times wow. and unfortunately one, one of them my white blood cells were too low so i couldn't um i had to wait an extra week but yeah for me um the the chemotherapy was um just a mind-blowing experience where I, I couldn't believe like so you it could be you could be anyone in the world but then as soon as you went into that hospital for your chemotherapy you know we were all sort of the same and and I sort of draw strength of um you know the, the random people that I was uh, doing my treatment with it sort of made me have to be strong you know I couldn't really break down or or feel sorry for yourself. You just had to go in there and and get your your treatment. But were there times during then where you had low moments where, as much as you were trying to be strong in yourself, that you just kind of you were struggling to cope with it mentally? Yeah. Look, for for me, there was um, plenty of times where I went in and you know almost would just burst into tears. But uh, yeah, I had to like sort of just hold myself because I felt. You, you, you didn't. I didn't want to let down my four guys or four other men that I was doing chemotherapy uh, with, and you know, I, 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 I also met this um, one day. I had to uh, go and uh, do treatment at the the hospital. Oh, I, I, I don't know what it's called, but um, it was a public holiday, so I didn't go into the day hospital. I went into the hospital where the really sick people that are there twenty four seven. On, uh, with their chemotherapy and that for me was an experience in itself and yeah I, I still remember the every every person in that room and and their and what they were going through and I talked to uh, this uh, wife of a, of a, a, a man around 50s who was just oh he's just a, a different person he was uh, yeah it was um, yeah crazy experience. And you touched on it there a couple of minutes ago. There was a, a wonderful moment back in December when your Benetton teammates all shaved their heads uh, to support you as you were going through the chemotherapy. Um, how, like, how did that feel? Uh, were you aware it was happening until until they had actually done it? Yeah, to be honest, um, I, I had no idea. And even on the, the Thursday leading up before they... I think they, they posted the video on Friday. I went out with a couple of... Um, couple of the boys out for dinner because my dad was here and they were all wearing hats but I didn't I, I thought nothing of it because it was winter but they were all wearing their beanies and hats during dinner but I, I, I thought nothing of it and then um, yeah on Friday I, I just uh, saw my phone sort of going off with all these notifications and I, I had a look at the video and and I and I to be honest I, I didn't know who they were showing for I thought oh that's so great they you know, they're doing it for the cause, for you know. And then it wasn't until the end where they where it showed all, I didn't know it was all the players. And it showed all the players, that, um, the quick photos of all the players who had done it, which was the whole team. And, and then there was a message that they'll, that they'll stand beside me for, um, until the end. 
which was, um, yeah, for me, it was a, re- a very emotional moment. And, yeah, it was, it was a lot of tears, but at the same time, I, I drew strength from that video and um, definitely helped me um, with the further treatment that I had. Yeah, and as you're going through that, like that kind of a gesture and the support in general from the rugby public, it must have just been just this incredible crutch to kind of fall back on in yourself when when times are getting tough that you know there's so many people out there who are who are offering you support publicly yeah look i yeah i can't really give a justice on on just the, or on that all that support particularly the rugby the rugby family um so many messages uh especially from yeah, from from obviously my past um, teams and and yeah, Benetton uh, was great uh, with their gesture and and their just their support right throughout and and uh, yeah, for me, um, I had a couple of uh, special mentions uh, with uh, Aaron Cruden right from the start. Um, he went through the same same thing. I think his chemo was a bit harsher, but um, speaking to him and and hearing his story just gave me a bit more confidence knowing that he sort of went through through that and you know mm. I, I was sort of hoping hoping that I could do the same and and yeah yeah but like I said the messages I received from everyone and especially the rugby community and and even um yeah, my old teacher I didn't know my old maths teacher I didn't know she had gone through chemo during teaching but she had she hadn't told anyone and well, I had no idea at the time, but anyway, she messaged me and oh, I was great. She's a plenty of support. And another player who's been through that as well is Christian Lealafano uh, in Australia. And uh, like yeah. I think so many people in the last couple of weeks have just been so thrilled to see his comeback over the last year or two to the point where he's starting tomorrow morning against uh, against New Zealand in a Bledisloe Cup game. And, you know, he's looking wow. to get back to a World Cup as well. To see those stories of, of someone, of a player as well. And you mentioned Aaron Cruden who had been through that and they are now back playing rugby probably as good as they've ever played in their entire career. Certainly the case for Leila Fano, probably in the form of his life. How much does that kind of, whether or not you get to the World Cup next month, just for your own long-term career, to look ahead down the years and go, you know what, I can I can come back and be as strong as I ever was? Yeah, look, well, for Leila Fano, I forgot to mention him too. Um, he, he sent me a message too. And, you know, his story is just inspirational for me. And yeah, like you said, um, for him to be starting and and at the top form of his um, career, you know, it's definitely um, inspiring for me. And you know, the hope that you know that I can hopefully come come away come away from this experience and um, you know also be uh, at the top of my game. And yeah, for me, with the World Cup, look, that dream is still alive, and I'm not getting my hopes up too much. But um, for me. I, I'm just excited to, to play rugby uh, again, and I can see that as soon. <laughs> but, you know, for, for who, um, you know, that's not important to me. Um, if it's for Benetton, then, you know, that's great. That's my, my Benetton family. And if it's for Tonga, you know, that's a, you know, that's another dream in itself. But, yeah, for me, just to, to do what I love again, um, you know, that, that'll be a, a dream come true. And then, yeah, I... I I, I'm so close, I just, I can almost, yeah, hear the whistle, but, yeah, hopefully soon. And when you were, fi- like, when were you finally given the all clear to go back out onto the rugby pitch and, and start training again? At, you know, at, at, at what point did the doctors, did, you know, did you come through the chemo and the doctor said, you know, gave you that all okay. So, in February the 4th, um, they, 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 it wasn't, it was really good news, but they said I can start training, and I didn't get the uh, all clear until uh, June. So oh. June sixteenth, uh, June sixteenth. That's when um, I was made uh, remission or I was under remission. remission. Yeah. So yeah, so that, that was that's when I officially was um, remission. But even though in February, in my in my head, I was aiming to play the last. Um, Round robin game for against uh, Zebra mm-hmm. um, for for Benetton. That was my goal, and it was it was kind of nice because I really pushed my body and got my body into good shape. But then, but then, um, yeah, I guess it was uh, too early. And 
And what was yeah. it? And what was it like, kind of being back out on the pitch? How tough was it to come up to speed? Because on our on this show, uh, our land of the rising scrum last week, we looked at uh, France in the World Cup, and I spoke to another New Zealand-born player from France, Tony Marsh, who in two thousand and three. Uh, had undergone treatment for testicular cancer and came back to play in the World Cup as well. And he was telling me just how just how difficult it was to to get back up to speed and to you know just just get your rugby strength back. Yeah, well, I for I, I guess for me, yeah, um, I I'm I'm um, I've had a pretty bad run of injuries, so I understand the rehab side of things and yeah there was a lot of there was a lot of work and it was it was definitely really tough but at the same time for me given the break I was just just so happy to do uh, do, do that grind again I was happy to to do the little rehab stuff and I've, I've really enjoyed the process a lot more after this experience for me and and I guess it's made it easier to yeah to work hard but you know for for most rugby players you know, we we always get into that hurt box, and mm. that's just part of part of rugby. You know, and, the, and um, I guess for me, after the experience, uh, and and because during my chemo, I was I was allowed to do nothing. So the the head of uh, the oncology department in Italy wrote my program, and he told me that I wasn't allowed to train. I could only just do normal light day to day stuff. Um, you know, with playing with Nadia, not too, not too active. So for me, when I once I got to start, you know, I really enjoyed enjoyed all that that process. And you mentioned you were trying to come back for the end of the Pro 14 season. It just came a little bit too early in the end for you. But you were on the verge of making your comeback just a couple of weeks ago. You'd been selected yeah. and actually named as captain as well for Tonga's Pacific Nations <laughs> Cup game against Samoa. And as you mentioned, yeah. the, the small, the day-to-day, the niggle injuries. Unfortunately for you, you picked up, a, was it a pectoral injury? Yeah, I, I 22 centimetre tear. Um, look, that that was another experience in itself, and yeah, it just it just reminded me that you know, as as much as I'm, I had to put things into perspective. Look, yeah, I'm I'm healthy. I, yeah. I I can be a good father. I can be an active father right now, but can I play rugby? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's, it was very unfortunate. Um, I think though that week uh, after this uh, that experience, it's um, taken a lot of pressure off me in in terms of putting all that pressure on trying to be back and trying to be the best Nasi Manu that everyone's seen, even though I've had a whole year year off with you know, with the the healing of um, cancer and also then the re- rehab <laughs> rehabilitation of, of just bringing up the body back up to rugby strength. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's... Um, look, I, I'm excited. I can see, see me playing in, in September, but you know, who for, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I might just speak to you about your own background, really, because as I mentioned, you were New Zealand born, but uh, raised in a Tongan family. And uh, in another episode of this, uh, when we covered Samoa, I spoke to <laughs> Daniel Leo, and he was talking okay. about growing up in New Zealand in uh, a tight knit Samoan family and how, even though it was in, I think it might have been Auckland where he's growing up, but it's like growing up in in a small version of Samoa. What, what was it like that for you in in a real close Tongan family? Yeah, um, I think it's for me. It was uh, yeah, the classical island family where you know church and school, but mostly rugby. Um, <laughs> church, school, rugby, you know, was was centered in our lives, uh, particularly church and. And yeah, I think for me it was um, it sort of made me the person I am today. And I, I'm really blessed that I didn't have the typical um, island sort of stresses on for my parents, because my parents wanted us to live our own lives, as opposed to I know that the typical island family like it can be quite tough because you know the pressures of the kids to to provide. Like once the parents provide, you know, they sacrifice so much for us. Then for the for the kids to then, 
you know, give money for your, for your parents, give money to the church. And, you know, those kind of kinds of pressure can, can, you know, be a lot on teenage boys or Tongan boys or Tongan girls, um, you know, leaving leaving their high school era and going into the work or going into school. So I was, yeah, I think for me, I was, I was really blessed not to have all that pressure. And yeah, I think, I think, um, yeah, definitely, I guess made me more humble and yeah, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a massive, uh, you can go a lot of places with this topic. <laughs> uh, you mentioned school as well. Uh, looking back, you, you were part of quite a decent Christchurch boys, uh, schools team. And look, look at some of the players you played alongside with Colin Slade, Owen Franks, yeah. Matt Todd, and Tyler Blandell, who, uh, our, our listeners will know, uh, from Munster at the moment. Quite a decent team you had there. Yeah. Yeah. So if I was, I was pretty lucky in my, in my three years. Uh, we won nationals, which is pretty rare, um, especially a South Island team. And uh, yeah, in one of my years, uh, I can't. Uh, Colin Said was our first five. Owen Franks was our tight head prop. Matt Todd was our flanker. Um, Tim Bateman, uh, Tim Bateman for Crusaders. Well. Yeah, Moldy, uh, New Zealand Moldies, He was there. And then even my final year, you know, we had Tyler Blindell, who who really came came through in and 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 my seventh form year. Um, and and a lot of other players who are playing, you know, pro- professional rugby, uh, Ash Dixon. Um, yeah, it was, you know, for me, I, I was pretty blessed with uh, the school that I went to at the at the time um, that I did. And, you know, I really experienced um, a high level of, of rugby right from school, um, which I was really fortunate. And from there, I went into the Canterbury system. And then from there, I, I went down south to to be a Highlander just because Kieran Reid was, you know, he's the number one. <laughs> yeah. Eight, so. Decent competition up against you. Um, you yeah. made your Tonga debut last summer. You uh, you chose to represent uh, uh, Tonga. Wh- when did you make the, the call to kind of, your, your obvious, you know, your born allegiance would have been to one day represent the All Blacks, but you made the call a year or so ago to, to go and play for Tonga. How, how proud a moment was that for, for you and for your family? Yeah, look, it was a it was a huge, huge moment for for me and my family, um, particularly my grandparents. I, I really it was a special moment for me, you know, to to know that my grandparents moved. They were the ones who had this vision to move to New Zealand, and um, to give my parents a, a bit of opportunity. And then, and then so then my parents, you know, given me, you know, working hard to give me the opportunity to go to a good school and. And to you know to upskill, you know the talent that I've been blessed with, and yeah, I, I guess to represent my my um, my country, you know, I really did represent them, and yeah, it was an emotional emotional day, and and I really enjoyed, yeah, I really enjoyed um, my first cap, even though we lost. <laughs> And Tonga have been in action over the, the last couple of weeks in the uh, Pacific Nations Cup. They just wrapped it up this morning, uh, beating Canada. I know we mentioned off air beforehand, you, you didn't get a chance to see it because it was uh, pretty early in the morning when it was going on and you had uh, training to prepare for this afternoon. But uh, how are yeah. Tonga shaping up, do you think, heading in towards the World Cup? It's in a pretty difficult pool with uh, England, France and Argentina, yeah. but... As we saw back in 2011, uh, Tonga are a team that uh, they can cause a shock or two and nearly did so as well in 2007 yeah. with with England and South Africa. Ran them both very close. Yeah, I, I think, um, look, ever since I, I got to join the team um, three weeks ago, <laughs> uh, the, the goal was really, they were all, all, all they had their eyes set on was getting to England in the best shape that they, that they can and yeah, I think that against Samoa and um, particularly against Japan, you know, we, we had to take a lot of learnings from those games. And yeah, I didn't get to watch a game this this morning, but from you know, in terms of physical side of things, I think it's been the boys have worked really hard in this uh, in the last month, and you know, it, it might have um, you know affected the performances. Um, but it's all in the bigger picture of um, arriving against England, you know, at our top physical shape. So, yeah, we'll, we'll soon see, um, you know, that that we're coming to come into play when when we um, first start. 
Nazi, it's been a pleasure talking to you uh, this morning and just to say very best of luck over the next few weeks and, you know, whether the next shirt you're wearing is a Tonga shirt or a Benetton, uh, Benetton jersey, yeah. it's going to be great for everyone to see you back out on the pitch and uh, thanks a million for taking our call. Uh, thank you. Cheers.